and when you're ready, take it away. Awesome. Hello, everyone. My name is Aurel Mizan. I'm a senior software engineer at Reddit, working on the OpenShift virtualization networking team. I'm very happy to be here. And today we're, go we're going to talk about uh, how to verify that your cluster functionality actually works using automation. So the talk is called My Cluster is Running, but does it actually work? So let's go over the agenda. We'll talk about the general pr problem. We'll give a concrete example. We'll talk about the advantages of using automation in order to test your cluster in production, of course. What are the solution requirements? What is a checkup? How do you configure and run a checkup? We'll do a little demo of a checkup. Um, I'll show you existing checkups that you can uh, uh, read as references or use as a user and how to write your own checkup and we'll talk a little bit about conclusions. So the general pr problem is special requirements can be met using customization or extension to Kubert. It can be uh, on the compute storage network uh, or dedicated hardware or a combination of these. There are many moving parts in a Kubert cluster. It could be hardware, it could be software. Configuration is not always straightforward and could be time consuming. It could be a day one operation when you deploy your cluster, or it could be a day two operation when you're maintaining your cluster. Let's say that you um, upgrade your Kubert deployment, you change software, you change configuration, and you want to make sure that your cluster actually works. So how do you know that your cluster actually works? Let's uh, give a concrete example. Let's say that we have two worker nodes and they are connected uh, using a high-speed network. They both has a specialized uh, network uh, interface cards and, uh, and a switch that uh, supports this kind of high-speed networking. And we want to check that we have connectivity between two virtual machines on both nodes. So we can do it by hand, but using automation has a lot of advantages. It is fast, it is reproducible, it is portable between cluster. It hides a lot of complexity. You don't need to, you know, like configure VMI manifests or something along those lines. And it is very less prone to human errors. Let's say, what are the solution requirements of this uh, automation? It should be operated using kubectl. It should not leave any leftovers after its execution. It uh, will be deployable and usable by non-cluster admin. And, uh, it could also interact with existing objects that you have on your cluster. So enter checkups. What is a checkup? A checkup is a Kubernetes application used to verify a cluster functionality. It, uh, because it is a Kubernetes application, it is composed of a container image and it uses a service account and specialized ARBA calls in order to create, delete, remove, or update objects. So how do you configure and execute a checkup? The configuration is performed using a user supplied config map object and the execution is performed by applying a job that will be linked to this config map. Also, the results of the checkup will be written to the uh, same user supplied config map that you've configured your checkup with. Let's give a, a little concrete uh, example. This is the VM latency checkup. It is a checkup that tests that the uh, two virtual machines can, con uh, can communicate over a network and it also measures their uh, network latency. So what do we have here? We have a config map that you use to configure your checkup and also to receive the results at the end. You have a job that is referring to this config map to read and write the results to, and to read the configuration and write the results to. And it controls two virtual machine instances. It creates them, it watches them, and it deletes them in the end in, not, uh, in order to not uh, leave any traces behind. And we have a network attachment definition. We don't need to understand what the network attachment definition is. We just need to understand that it is an existing object 
on our cluster that uh, we want our checker to interact with. Let's give uh, an example of uh, this checkups configuration. As you can see, we are using a simple config map. We have uh, the data section, which has a, a timeout after how much time this uh, checkup will close itself and fail because of a timeout. We also have uh, customizable parameters like uh, the network attachment definitions, namespace and name. We also want to uh, specify after how much milliseconds we consider uh, the latency to be to fail the checkup. Let's say in this example, we say that if the checkup is greater than 10 uh, milliseconds, then the checkup fails. And the last parameter is the duration, the sample duration uh, parameter, which says that this checkup will uh, try to check the latency and connectivity for five seconds. This is an example of how you configure the checkup uh, job. Basically, most of it is a, a boilerplate. You don't need to change your anything. You just take it as is. The only thing that you need to change is where the config map is located, its namespace and name, as you can see here inside this red rectangle. And let's uh, talk about the results. As you can see in the results, they are uh, written to the same config map that we've uh, previously supplied to the checkup. You can see that uh, your input is also present here, so you can see what output was uh, received from which inputs. The, the two things that we mostly care about is the status.succeeded field. And in this case, it is true. So the checkup has passed and we have connectivity between uh, two VMs over two nodes. And we can see also the status failure reason field is empty. So we did not uh, had any failures during this run. And this is an example of a failure uh, case when the status succeeded uh, field is false. And we can see that we've tried to ping the target VMI from the source VMI, and we couldn't do it because we had a uh, network connectivity issues. So what are the main processes of the checkup? First, it fetches the user configuration from the config map. Later on, it's the setup uh, phase where it creates the two VMIs and wait for them to completely boot. In the next phase, the checkups body, we use the uh, VMIs console in order to ping the target VMI from the source VMI. Um, right now we're using a ping, but it also could be a very fancy tool other than ping. And in the last phase, or one before last phase, we tear down, we delete both VMIs and wait for their disposal in, all, in order to not leave any traces behind. We also use owner reference. We make the two VMIs be owned by the checkups uh, underlying pod. And this is uh, another uh, garbage collection uh, mechanism that Kubernetes provides us in order to not leave any traces behind. And the last step is reporting the results, as you saw in the previous slides. So let's do a little demo. So here we can see the network attachment definition, the object that we already have in our cluster and we want to make the checkup interact with. The next step is to deploy the checkups permission, the customized RBAC rules that makes the checkup able to create, delete, and watch uh, VMI objects. Also, it uh, allows them to use the console, the serial console, in order to uh, use the pin command. Next, we will configure the checkup using a simple and plain config map object. You can see the same uh, example as was in the slides. We are trying to make this checkup timeout after five minutes. We say that the network attachment definition namespace is target NS, 
and its name is Bridge Network. We also say that we want the desired latency to be uh, less than 10 uh, milliseconds. Also, we say that we want to sample uh, this uh, latency over five seconds. Next, we apply this config map. And we go to the job. Here, as you can see in the job, it's mostly boilerplate. We are using a uh, app stream, a uh, kubernetes VM latency image. Uh, we drop all privileges and make it run with the least uh, number of uh, capabilities. It basically runs with the lowest privileges as possible. And you can see here in the environment variables part, we are linking to the config map namespace and name. We also have here the pod UID, which is used for the uh, garbage collection uh, mechanism of Kubernetes, the owner reference. So here we apply this job and we'll wait for it to complete using the kubectl wait command. This is a bit uh, fast forward, so it doesn't uh, end this quickly, but it ends quickly enough. Here we can see the results produced by uh, this checkup. Let's go back a bit. And this time we'll present it in a JSON format so we can see just the result. So here we can see the parameters, the input parameters that we've given to this checker at the beginning. And we can see uh, that it was successful. It succeeded. It succeeded the field is equal to true. And we can see that the failure reason is empty. And we have here measurements of all kinds of latency, like the minimum latency, the maximum latency, the average latency. It's all uh, in nanoseconds. We can also see uh, on what node the, the source uh, VMI were at. So it was scheduled to Walker and the target was scheduled to Walker too. We also can see the start and completion timestamps. So it makes it uh, very uh, convenient to understand how much time did it take to run this checkup. You can see here from the uh, time differences that it only took about 40, even less. 35 seconds in order to run this checkup. Next, after we are pleased with the results or not, we can change something in the cluster or not, if we're happy. We can delete the checkup job because we don't need it anymore. And we can delete the config map because we don't need it anymore. And if we don't need the permissions, we don't want to run it, we don't want to run it again. So we also remove the permissions. And you can see by using kubectl get VMI command that the cluster is empty and we did not uh, leave any traces behind. So this was the demo. Let's get back to the slides. So uh, currently we have three existing checkups in various maturity levels. The one that was just demoed is called the VM latency checkup. It verifies connectivity between two VMs over a secondary network, and it also measures the network latency. It was uh, written in order to verify a high speed network capabilities like SRIOV, which has a ton of moving parts. And we want to verify in the end that it actually works. The next uh, checkup that we have, which is uh, brand new, and it is tested uh, at the moment, it is uh, going through its uh, testing phase. It is called the Kubert DPDK checkup. It's a checkup that verifies that you can run DPDK workloads on Kubert with zero packet loss. It is a very complex and interesting checkup, much more than the VM latency checkup. And the last one, which is the baby checkup, it's the Kubert real-time checkup, 
which verifies that your cluster is ready to run real-time workloads. So if you run, want to write your own checkup, uh, you have the Kiagnos project with uh, its link down below, GitHub Kiagnos slash Kiagnos. It provides several things. One of them is a Go library that can help you to write checkups. It handles the operations between the checkup and the config map. And it also provides the VM latency checkup as a reference. You can read it. It's quite simple. It is written in Go. And you can understand from it how to test your own use case. Maybe it's a compute, maybe it's a storage, or another network checkup. So for conclusions, cluster functionality should be checked when the cluster changes. If you, for example, change configuration, software, or hardware components, and using checkups could make this process faster, reproducible, and less prone to human error. It is also um, operated by KubeCattle, so you don't need any specialized tool in order to use it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Let's see, we have here a question from Lubo. Do maintainers accept new checkups? We can talk about it. Let's say, let's talk about it and we'll see what checkups do you want to write. If we can maintain it, I'll be happy to discuss new ideas. Are, are there any checkups um, you're familiar with that have been collaborations from outside contributors? Not yet. This is a relatively a, a relativity a relatively new project. Yeah. It only runs for a one year or so, and it also has you know like three checkups. So we're a few people writing some complex checkups, and we really appreciate for a um, contribution from the outside. Great. Um, we're only 17 minutes in, so I don't know if you had any other demo items that you thought yeah, about including. Sure. You're welcome to down. jump back into it and, and do whatever comes to mind. We might have another question. Can results, can result config map show history of repetitive checkup results? So it sounds like, um, testing history. Yes, so uh, as a feature, we don't allow uh, the results config, the config, but the, you know, it's showing both uh, the input and outputs of the checkup. So we don't allow checkups to be reused. So the checkup, each checkups check that uh, if the checkup, if this config, map, I'm sorry, was used in the past, so it doesn't let it uh, be used again in order for the results to match the inputs. So you don't uh, mix and match inputs and results. I can also show the DPDK checkup real quick because we have time. Yeah. The, D the DPDK checkup, as uh, I've said earlier, checks that your cluster is ready for DPDK workloads. So let's run the checkup. It's, it is very similar to the a VM latency checkup, as you can see, we also interact with the network attachment definition. We apply the checkups permission. It's just the same process all over again, but with different uh, configuration and with different uh, checkup binary. Here you can see that we are using an SRIOV a network attachment definition that also is configured for DPDK. We also use a runtime class in order to use uh, dedicated CPUs, which are also isolated. Here on uh, line nine, we say how much packets do we want to send per second? Here is 8 million, and the test duration will be 10 seconds. So 
So here we apply this term figma. And again, the uh, checkups job is the same as uh, in the previous one. We only change the image and the names and namespace of the config map. But this thing is uh, completely boilerplated. We apply it. And we wait for it to finish successfully. Here it's not in real time. It is a little faster than real time because this checkup takes several minutes to complete. Here we can see the results. We can see that we have zero packet loss and the checkup was succeeded. That means that our cluster is ready to run DPDK workloads. In this specific uh, test, both the receiving end and the transmitting end both uh, were on the same node, but this checkup could also work uh, across different nodes in the cluster. And same as the DPD, and same as the uh, VM latency checkup, we delete the job, we delete the config map bit because we don't need them anymore, and we delete the permissions, and our cluster is nice and clean. There is a question from Alexander Wells. Would it make sense to collect the results in a central repository with some timestamp so you can compare results over time, kind of like the SIG performance we just saw? Yes, you can. Uh, if you want, you can save all of your config maps. It has all the inputs and all the outputs and all the timestamps. You just don't delete them when you complete uh, your checkup execution. Any other questions? Alexander, can you please elaborate what could be part of the tool? The saving of the output is done automatically for you. You get the config map. It contains both inputs and outputs. So when you delete the checkups job, you can save the config map for later use or investigation or processing. So it's already built in. Yeah, if I was um, to add my two cents, which aren't necessarily um... A complete picture of what you're doing but i would guess that the the config map i mean unless you had a reliable logging stack or storage that was predictable it's kind of difficult to say n know that how to programmatically save the contents of the config map and that's like where to put it whether you're sending it to a, a logger or whether you're sending it to an S3 bucket or something like that. And, and that's something that makes sense probably for the, um, the operator to do the, the actual um, DevOps folks running the clusters. Yes, this makes total sense. Thank you for the feedback. We also considered in the past also exporting a some artifacts from checkups let's say these checkups probably i'm not sure if they will produce artifacts but maybe other checkups can like graphs or some spreadsheets the sky is the limit with these checkups you can do basically whatever you want that'd be cool all right well thank you very much for your presentation um thank you for having me